Neon Genesis Evangelion, a story about a young kid named Shinji being forced by his father to get in a giant robot in order to beat a bunch of alien monsters called the Angels with the help of his friends Asuka, Misato, Rei, and various others. And also, he and his various companions have to deal with various dramatic and lifelong effects of things such as childhood depression, anxiety, suicide, and various other real problems. But hey, you get to see underage skin because the director's just that kind of guy. It's one of the most iconic animations of all time and has inspired many other works, as well as set a new bar for many sci-fi slash mecha shows to achieve. This video will already expect you to have seen the original anime, its film End of Evangelion, and of course the three rebuild films. And by the title, you can tell I'm going to be talking about everyone's favorite loudmouth redhead, Asuka Langley. But not just any Asuka. The rebuild's counterpart of Asuka is actually extremely different from the original's version. And the first visible change is in the name, Shikinami instead of Soryu. But why are you talking about her? Isn't she just a basic simple bitch that just screams non-stop and is completely devoid of any substance? Unlike her original counterpart, which completely broke down the tsundere stereotype and labeled her as a mentally unstable, attention-seeking little girl? No! Bad. Bad assumption. I completely agree with the fact that Soryu, for who she is, is one of the best written characters I've ever seen. She's a mentally broken, scared, and validation-obsessed young girl who hates anybody who takes away her spotlight. However, she is not my Asuka. What? No, no, alright. I know that sounds bad. I said my. So don't get your panties in a bunch. But why isn't she your Asuka, you may be asking? Well, I'm gonna straight up say, I just like Shikinami better. But why do you like- Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that now. Soryu is a great character, but not exactly somebody I would ever consider sufficient in motivating her viewers. I mean, I guess you can consider her motivating people to not be like her. As oftentimes, most people see themselves motivated by good choices rather than the bad ones like Soryu makes. So really, it's up to the viewer's interpretation on that one. In order to let you fully understand why I like Shikinami better, and why I believe she deserves more praise, we must go back and revisit the films in which she stars in. Evangelion 2.0, You Cannot Advance, and Evangelion 3.0, You Cannot Redo. I'll likely make an updated video of some kind in order to further support my argument when the final film, 3.0 plus 1.0, comes out overseas. I'll at times be comparing the two Asukas in order to show the difference between the two, and just how much different or similar they really are. Furthermore, this is a completely different version of the character, so I won't be saying the real Asuka wouldn't do this, because clearly, this is the real Asuka. Just a different one. I'm just trying to say keep your mind open to interpretation, and also feel free to criticize my analysis or give feedback on it in the comments below. Now, let us commence forth the understanding of Asuka Shikinami Langley. The moment we meet Asuka in person, she spouts this line. The way her voice never strays away from the intention of her words makes us deduce that she's not just acting sure of Ava Unit 2 being the first true Evangelion. She is sure of it. This assuredness can either make her appear confident or stubborn. Either way, they are both sound assumptions of her character. As we go deeper, a character trait I see 2.0 get rid of is her flirty and sexualizing demeanor from the original. The original purposefully had this flirtation in order to gain the attention and appraisal of others to satisfy her own lust for control. However, in this new reinvention of the character, she appears... How do I put this? Normal? Shocking, I know. She doesn't like having Shinji see her naked. She doesn't like guys coming up to her and trying to ask her out either. This removal of this trait makes me think and consider one thing. That Shikinami does not need the validation of others in order to feel fulfilled. But of course, that is still just an assumption, and we need even more proof for this claim to sound pretty sound. And so I further prove my claim in the form of her doll. Yes, that exact doll. The doll that resulted in the original Asuka's mother neglecting her and ultimately committing suicide due to mental illness, thus creating a fear of dolls for Asuka. Within the original, Asuka associated Rei as a doll due to her belief in Rei to be a very simple and plain individual with no personal goal. I'll get back to her rebuild interpretation of Rei later on, as the first time we see her with the doll in 2.0, we actually see her talking to it, saying that she's better off on her own. The reason she's having the doll be a reassurance object instead of a weakness is that Shikinami likely wished to create new meaning out of it rather than view it as an object that always haunts her and motivates her need for attention and validation from others. Instead, using it as something that allows her to express her true emotions outwards rather than build up some kind of pent-up fear and anxiety. Also, this version of Asuka seemed to be infatuated but not romantically interested in Shinji. 
as she's never seen blushing or becoming jealous of Rei or Shinji talking to each other, further proving her as not the same Asuka from the original. Later on, she says something along the lines of it being stupid to be close-minded to not have a man in the kitchen sometimes. This shows how she sees close-minded mindsets like Toji's as having useless principles, which limit more open-mindedness from coming into his life. Or it could just mean she's a true advocate of gender equality. Now, since so far I've seen her be a person who appears true to herself, Often just throw away lines like, be thankful for the food you're given, makes me see her as more of a caretaking persona, almost like a big sister of sorts. But Asuka does keep her hot-headed persona from the original, clearly seen through lines such as this. Obviously referencing Soryu as they are both willing to work with anyone in the heat of the moment. The rebuilds also kind of just throw the I'm helpless line and hope it sticks, and to be honest, I do think it does. Why you may be asking? Well, because it's actually her realizing, not that she's useless, but that she needs to learn to further help others around her in a more effective way. Then when Asuka is feeling lonely and decides to sleep next to Shinji, it's not sexualized as it was in the original. Okay, maybe not as much as the original. FBI, open up! And it has her say... Within the original anime, Asuka piloted to seek self-worth, however within the rebuilds, she is instead likely trying to hint at the fact that she wants to pilot in order to protect and help others because she is able to do so. It's not so deep or self-deprecating as the original, instead opting for a more positive outlook on the line. We are then redirected back to school where we see Rei and Shinji interact with each other while Asuka spectates them. This scene matters due to its importance in Asuka's self-growth of helping others. The events that led to that moment went like this. Asuka got mad at Shinji for not making food for her. Shinji then makes food for her the next time she goes to school. Asuka likes the food and is offered to eat with somebody else but says she's not sharing, as Shinji also made more for Rei in order to eat with her. Asuka sees this action and decides, Well, you can eat the rest. This is not a sign of her being jealous of Rei and Shinji, no. It's a reminder Shinji made to her that made her realize that she should be willing to share not just her food but herself to others so that when she then decides to instead cook for Shinji it's not a romantic gesture it's a platonic one as we then again see her not blushing when Misato brings up Shinji possibly being her boyfriend another thing I'd like to bring up now because I'll be bringing it up way later in the next film is that Shikinami is much more in tune with Unit 2 and has somewhat of a bond to it and the line of her saying that the cockpit of an Ava is the only place she belongs in is not a sign of her seeing herself as useless, but that she sees worth in her being a pilot more than anything else. Her losing the ability to use Unit 02 leads her down the path of her getting jealous of Rei not for liking Shinji, but for being allowed to do what Asuka cannot continue, piloting an Eva. This then has her getting mad and almost hurting Rei. Thankfully, unlike the anime, the reboot changes it to show Rei's change from doll to person, as well as Asuka's out of nowhere violent lash out at a fellow teammate who never meant any harm to her in the first place. Now to me, this action represents those times you got mad at your parents for taking your toys away for misbehaving. I believe Rei stopping Asuka shows how we, along with Asuka, are creatures that get mad out of frustration and will need somebody else to stop you from hurting yourself as well as others. Asuka isn't having boy problems because as stated, and shown previously, she was never interested in any boy in the first place. And that when they both go their separate ways after, Asuka is seen being aware of the fact that Rei is in fact in love with Shinji, but Rei is unaware of the fact. This makes me believe that Shikinami follows the tsundere guideline by having not brought up the idea of adoration with others because her personality is not much associated with deep intimacy. Instead acting as a passive viewer who tries to find out whether or not said adoration others have is real. This scene in the elevator then shows that Asuka has determined that Shinji and Rei do in fact have a bond, thus she decides to volunteer as the test pilot for Unit 03 allowing Rei to instead have the dinner party she arranged for her, Shinji, and Gendo. Rei then calls Asuka and thanks her for giving her the opportunity, leaving Asuka to let out a smile. This smile resembles somebody who enjoys seeing people happy whilst also knowing they were able to help make said person happy. And now to present the biggest and most prominent change Shikinami goes through, as this change is revealed during a one-on-one -on -one with Misato and it makes all the claims made prior all the more clear. I'm not really big on dinner parties anyway. And it's exhausting to act like you're having fun when you're not. Who wants to sit around watching everyone else have fun? The only thing I care about is being a pilot. She's introverted and it's seen through her cold exterior and everything I said prior, making her a person who has fun in her own way by being closed off but secretly caring when she feels like it. And I actually like being alone. I don't really 
really have much use for phony friends. I mean, no one's ever seen me for the real me. I was kind of starting to think that I didn't mind being around other people so much, but that is just so not me. Believe it or not, the world is full of all sorts of great things you don't know about yet. Try to enjoy it. The genius of this line and the monologue is not in the fact that it defines her as a new character. It presents her as being unaware of many things and wishes to become aware of them in order to learn from them. Even further, showing the nuanced storytelling Hideaki Anno used to foreshadow her plausible importance in future works. After this point, Asuka's basically completely sidelined for the rest of the film's runtime, as she had been consumed by the angel which took over Unit 03 during her test. However, the film's story begins to completely start going downhill on purpose, as it shows just how much of a proactive character Asuka really is. For those of you who are unaware of the term proactive character, a proactive character is often someone who makes choices of their own free will in order to move the story forward. Asuka leaving the story takes a toll on every event and leads to the events of the next film, making her act as a catalyst of sorts. As Gendo becomes cold again and likely evil, Shinji loses his trust in his father, Rei is unable to reconnect Shinji and Gendo, and she even dies by the end of the film. Asuka tried to do good, yet everything she did has been for nothing and the film then having Shinji's Ava unit go berserk and nearly brutally murder her makes her actions feel for naught and shows the betrayal she goes through by the people she tried to help. I also want to point out that during the fight with Berserk Unit 01 and Unit 03, the showing of Unit 01 choking Unit 03 is a great parallel and reference to the choking scene from End of Evangelion. Both scenes having the character of Shinji feel like he's being betrayed. Asuka is then left to recover in some kind of medical tank and is said to have likely been psychologically contaminated and may act as a valuable specimen. Hopefully, these aren't just throwaway lines, as they don't really serve much of a purpose to her character even in the next film, so I'll just have to keep it in mind until the release of 3.0 plus 1.0. Nonetheless, it's time for us to move on to the next film. The first time we see Asuka, she looks back to her former self, only this time with an altered plug suit and an eye patch over her left eye. Later on, when they are trying to get the wonder off the ground and away from an angel, Asuka says, Like the colonel always says, mission first, safety last keeping her need to be a pilot intact. It's then revealed, revealed that it's actually been 14 years since the events of the second film, yet Asuka has been left unaltered physically due to something we are yet to find out about called the Curse of the Avas. She and Mari also appear to be the only pilots on Willy's side, and since it's been 14 years, Mari and Asuka are veteran pilots by now and contain the most knowledge and experience when piloting an Evangelion unit. That is why she is entrusted with starting up the engine of the wonder. Since it's been 14 years, Asuka has likely had to come to gripes with the things Shinji did to both her and the world, nearly starting the third impact over a decision that wouldn't have happened in the first place had it not been for her actions in the second film. She's obviously grown distrustful and mad at Shinji, and it's a perfectly reasonable change in her character because, well, it's not really a change at all, because Shikinami had already clearly been seen to have strict boundaries to who she believes to help and be associated with. And if anything, I'd be pretty mad and distrustful of the guy who crushed me to near death, left me alone after I was on life support, and then committed a near extinction level event over one damn person. Furthermore, the line about her not liking phony friends really drives her opinion on Shinji in this film really well. As she was then leaving with her long-awaited encounter with Shinji, Asuka said, We don't have time to worry about one measly person anymore. Not in this world. Isn't that right, Colonel Katsura? At first, it appears like she's simply mocking Misato, but as the film progresses, she likely actually does believe in the greater good mentality that Misato also has. Once Shinji then decides to go with Seal's Eva, Asuka calls Shinji I've changed my mind. He's not an idiot, he's a brat. Calling him a brat shows how she has matured, but Shinji clearly has not, as Shinji once again has no remorse for the people around him, nor the situation at hand, and only wishes to satisfy his own feelings. The film then takes a break from anything Willy, and I do wish we got to see more of how Willy found out about Shinji's location, as well as what Asuka and its members were doing during that time. So once Asuka returns to the screen, she is shown being very desperate in stopping Kaburu and Shinji from going through with their plan. I mean, why wouldn't you be? Shinji's about to start another end of the world event without even knowing it. Asuka cares and is scared of Shinji causing more accidental damage. She doesn't know what else to do other than stop and force him to submit before it gets out of hand once again. She's like a big sister trying to teach her little brother that he's acting out of line. Arguably, she feels more like a hero than Shinji here. Asuka's independent and motivational side is finally once again subtly exposed during her fight with the new Rei. Rei is seen losing control of her Ava unit and asks what she must do since she only knows how to take orders. Asuka then replies with Hell if I know! The question is, what are you gonna do? 
Both appearing intimidating and as a threat, it shows how Asuka can inspire and motivate a person's actions with a blink of her own unbreakable drive, perfectly keeping the consistency of her character from 2.0 with the previous Rei, and how she hates people that are unsure of their own true feelings. Furthermore, while Mary may appear to enjoy piloting more than anybody else, Asuka looks to have more genuine respect for her unit than anybody else. As I've said before, 2.0 showed how Asuka cares about her unit and 3.0 shows just how much it sucks to lose an Evangelion unit during a trying time. But it is Shikinami Asuka and not Soryu Asuka, so she's not going to break down at any moment for losing her unit. Instead, she's going to stay strong and complete the job because... Mission first, safety last. As the film is coming to a close and Asuka and her group manage to stop another impact, Asuka opens up Unit 13's cockpit and says to Shinji, who is currently curled up in a ball, Damn, you're a brat. Wouldn't even come to my rescue. The tone appears like she is quite aware of Shinji's state and expected it from him. Once again, feeling like a big sister unsure of how to take care of her crying little brother. She then goes on to lecture Shinji, who now looks to have completely mentally shut down. Still acting like a baby. Even after all these years, you're the same old annoying brat. I swear. Can't you even stand up on your own damn feet? This line dictates that she is somebody who seeks improvements and solutions through actual action and change. Hmm, kinda reminds me of another character I made a video on. The clone race she was fighting with prior then comes up to her and Shinji and decides to join them on their journey back to the Wonder. Asuka doesn't scold or tell Rei to not go with them. In fact, she doesn't really even mind and lets her go with them. Furthering and strengthening the line she said prior of Hell if I know! The question is, what are you gonna do? Meaning she doesn't hate this new Rei. She's just frustrated with Rei's inability to choose. But Shikinami does not mind her coming with them as this Rei clearly is beginning to decide her on her own just like the previous Rei did. Showing that Asuka is no longer an immature girl that will lash out on Rei. She has become a mature woman who doesn't mind seeing self-improvement from others. Wait, the film's not out yet? I gotta wait five more years? God damn it. The best part about Evangelion is that it can mean anything to anyone. You can turn sadness into happiness with a switch of your own opinion on it. Kaworu in 3.0 said it best. In time, we rewrite the very nature of who we are. Hideki Anno clearly has the rebuilds mean something different to him, and we are yet to fully understand what they truly mean by the fourth film. However, I see Evangelion as not only about the depression and tragedy inflicted upon others or ourselves. It's also about just experiencing the small joys of life. The Rebuilds explore its world by showing the value of things such as the smell of the salt in the ocean, the smell of the soil, creating a pleasable piano tune, the vastness of the stars, or even the times we talked to ourselves when we were all alone. Appreciating minuscule things is oftentimes enough to satisfy us during trying times, yet we take them for granted. We people are a species that don't understand the importance of the things in our life until it's either on the brink of extinction or already gone. We're complex, yet so fragile and simple. Able to create whole economies and inventions that span thousands of years, yet we cry and completely reevaluate ourselves over a bunch of moving pictures that only last a few hours at a time. At least, at least I do that. But most importantly, the rebuilds introduced me to Asuka Shikinami Langley, which in turn showed the happiness Hideaki Anno had finally found who unlike Soryu, taught me to love myself without hesitation. She just kept going and had a really strong and strange optimistic view on things that made me happy and feel proud of who I've become. I myself am cocky, optimistic, but can be a know-it-all asshole like both Asukas, but I'll never again feel useless and get lost as the original Asuka did. Original Evangelion made that clear, but the rebuilds made me certain of it. I saw comfort in Shikinami because her strict exterior is what got me through my first year at university, because without her calculated understanding of the people around her, I'd likely have felt lost in a place as big as university myself, which was completely foreign to me once I first went there after going to a private school my entire life. Shikinami taught me that being alone, or rather having a small group of people you can trust, is enough if that's what makes you feel good. I'll forever be appreciative of a character who most find irritable, because, well, she just really made me happy. I'm so excited to see her and the rest of the characters' journeys be further fleshed out and finally come to an end once 3.0 plus 1.0 finally hits theaters overseas. I'll likely even make an update video with my two cents on it when I myself see the film. And just like my previous character study, a drawing, something created through the use of just our hands, managed to really make me appreciate the importance you and I have. I may have not been around since the very beginning of the Neon Genesis Evangelion story all the way back in 1995, but I can say that I managed to catch up to the ride, and hopefully one day, finally see that ride come to a full stop.